Good morning. In today's class, let's study about the gross features of ventricles of brain. So, ventricles of the brain are all the cavities which are present inside the brain. Okay, which will be filled by the CSF. Which will be filled by the CSF. The, even the formation of CSF is happening inside the ventricles. Okay, so first we have totally two lateral ventricles, a third ventricle, and a fourth ventricle. If you see the lateral ventricle, this is the largest cavity inside the brain, inside the cerebral hemisphere. So the lateral ventricles are the largest cavity inside the cerebral hemisphere. Now we have opened the cavity uh, from the superior aspect so that we can study all the parts of the lateral ventricle. This lateral ventricle, as you see, it has got three, uh, actually it has got three horns. You can see this is actually the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. You can see it is projected anteriorly. This cavity is projected anteriorly that is the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle similarly this is actually the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle posterior horn of the lateral ventricle and it also goes inferiorly you can see that is the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle so the anterior horn the posterior horn is projecting into the occipital lobe and the inferior horn which is projecting into the temporal lobe okay is the largest cavity of the cerebral hemisphere anterior horn the posterior horn and the inferior horn as you see this is a choroid plexus this is a choroid plexus okay this is a choroid plexus which will be formed by the ependyma and the blood vessels okay ependyma the pia mater and the blood vessels together it will form the choroid plexus which will be lining the see the floor which will be lining the floor of the floor of the central part floor of the central part of the lateral ventricle okay this is the central part so this is the central part so anterior horn central part posterior horn and the inferior horn floor of the central part of the lateral ventricle and also it also lines the the roof of the inferior roof of the inferior horn this inferior horn so the roof will also be lined by the choroid plexus which will be taking part in the formation of csf okay which will be taking part in the formation of csf these lateral ventricles on either side, so there are two side lateral ventricles, are separated by this small septum that is called septum pellicidum. We will see that. So, this is the see the lateral ventricle, you can see the blood vessels, the pia mater, which will form the choroid plexus, which is there in the floor of the central part. You can see the septum. Here the septum is not there in this area, so here all the septum will be there. So this is the septum pellicidum which will be separating the two sides lateral ventricle, the middle part. Okay, the central part will be separated by the septum pellicidum. Okay, and this is actually the fornix. Okay, fornix. The septum pellicidum is attached between the corpus callosum and the fornix. Okay, this is the fornix. Okay, now this lateral ventricle communicates with the third ventricle by means of this foramen. You can see this foramen. This is an interventricular foramen. This foramen is an interventricular foramen. Now will it will lead to the third ventricle? So this cavity here, this cavity here in the diencephalon is actually the third ventricle. You can see this cavity is the third ventricle. Okay, now we'll see the features of third ventricle. The third ventricle is bounded, bounded on either side by means of the thalamus. This is the thalamus. On either side by the thalamus and anteriorly this area is the hypothalamus. Bounded by the thalamus and the hypothalamus. Okay, thalamus and the hypothalamus. This thalamus and the hypothalamus is separated by the sulcus here. That is a hypothalamic sulcus which will be extending from the interventricular foramen to that of the foramen aqueduct of sylvius okay this is a hypothalamic sulcus it will be separating the thalamus from the anterior antero inferiorly placed hypothalamus okay if you note the choroid plexus of the third ventricle is located on the roof you can see the roof of the third ventricle the choroid plexus are located in the roof so the ependyma and the choroid plexus so the ependyma and the along with the blood vessels here it will form the choroid plexus which is present on the roof of the third ventricle so if you see the third ventricle it has got two lateral walls already we studied about the lateral wall which is formed by the thalamus and the hypothalamus and the interthalamic sulcus okay and also it also contains a part called epithalamus which will be here 
So this area behind and post the posterior to the thalamus, posterior superior to the thalamus, we have epithalamus. So thalamus, epithalamus and hypothalamus with the hypothalamic sulcus which will form the lateral wall. Okay. So we have two lateral walls. Then we have a roof. This is a roof. Already I told you what forms the roof which has the ependyma. Okay. Which has ependyma and the blood vessel which form choroid plexus which is present along the roof. Okay. Then we have two, uh, three walls. The posterior wall, the anterior wall and an inferior wall. Okay. This is the inferior wall. So anterior wall, the posterior wall and the inferior wall. We will study about these three walls now. Roof and the lateral wall already we finished. One more feature of the lateral wall I will just finish. You can see this one. This is the interthalamic adhesion that is also forming a part of the lateral wall which will be connecting the two thalamus. The interthalamic adhesion is the gray matter which is connecting the two thalamus. Okay, that is also situated in the lateral wall. Okay. Now the, coming to the anterior wall, okay, coming to the anterior wall, the anterior wall is formed by the anterior commissure, you can see this is the anterior commissure, commissural fiber, the columns of the fornix, okay, this is the columns of the fornix, having anterior commissure, this is the fornix, okay, this is the fornix, so it is having the columns of the fornix, the anterior commissure and this fiber here, that is the lamina terminalis, okay, that is the lamina terminalis, this forms the anterior wall, okay, which forms the anterior wall. Coming to the posterior wall, it is mainly formed by, uh, there is a stalk here which will lead to the pineal gland, okay, the posterior wall is mainly formed here by the pineal gland, okay, which is actually missing here, only the stalk of the pineal gland is there, this pineal gland is a very important gland which will secrete a hormone called melatonin, okay, this melatonin is very important for uh, sleep-wake cycle, for maintaining the sleep-wake cycle, okay, of an individual, that's the main uh, uh, function of melatonin, it has many other functions, so the most important function is maintaining the sleep-wake cycle, okay, that is actually the p uh, pineal gland which is located on the posterior wall and below, uh, just near the stalk here, we have the posterior commissure, this is actually the posterior commissure, okay, so posteriorly it is formed by the pineal gland, the posterior commissure and uh, uh, so these are the two important structures of the posterior wall. Now coming to the inferior wall. So this is the inferior wall. Okay, inferior wall from anterior to posterior We have the following structures The inferior wall is otherwise called the floor. We can see it is formed by see this is optic asthma it's optic asthma followed by the tuber cinarium. So this area is the tuber cinarium which will have the pituitary gland which is missing here Okay, there will be the tuber cinarium and the pituitary gland here Okay, the stock of the pituitary gland, that is the infundibulum, tuber cinarium and the infundibulum here. Then coming to this area, this is the mammillary body, this is the mammillary body followed by posterior perforated substance. Here will be the posterior perforated substance through the blood vessels will enter here. So that is actually the posterior perforated substance and this part is actually the anterior aspect of the midbrain. This is called the tegmentum of midbrain, okay, it's the tegmentum of midbrain. So these are the parts of the Floor, otherwise called the inferior wall. Okay, floor or the inferior wall. Okay, so these are all the boundaries of third ventricle. Now we'll see how the circulation of CSF is happening. As you see, the anterior, uh, the third lateral ventricle communicates to the third ventricle by means of interventricular foramen. Okay, this is the interventricular foramen. Now the third ventricle is filled. Now from the third ventricle, it's communicated to the fourth ventricle by means of this foramen called aqueduct of sil aqueduct of sylvius okay aqueduct of sylvius which will communicate to that of the fourth ventricle this is the fourth ventricle already we have covered about the floor of the fourth ventricle in our last videos okay you can refer our previous videos for studying the floor of the fourth ventricle thank you